Rihanna Lynn, who is going to be our closing keynote speaker. She is a biologist turned tech entrepreneur. Rihanna, I want to sit in and hear what you have to say. She's also the founder and CEO of Journey Foods and our 2019 Women in Tech Festival Pitch Competition winner. Rihanna, how are you doing? And welcome, welcome here. Hello, hello, how's it going? I didn't know we would start so soon, but happy to be here. Thank you for the intro. All yours, Rihanna. Well, wonderful, wonderful. I uh, am thrilled to, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. I don't, I don't know if, if most, most people are on the West Coast right now, uh, but I've just been uh, really excited to think about the past year uh, and what a whirlwind it's been uh, for me, for Journey Foods, and of course, like all of us uh, here today. Uh, I, you know, I would like to start by thanking Denise and Team Shalou. Thank you for the intro, uh, and really just the opportunity to share my story this year, uh, but also the amazing opportunity to pitch last year. Uh, uh, the platform, the speakers today, uh, as as well as. Uh, Many, a lot of the programming for tomorrow just seems to be uh, very enjoyable, and I, I love tuning in uh, th throughout the day as we were closing out some of our team meetings. Uh, lots of great lessons, and of course, really excited to see the new crop of pitches this year as well. Wow! Uh, so I think first, uh, when when I was asked to come back and and think about the keynote and and my story over the past year. Uh, I really uh, wanted to find something that could direct directly to the entrepreneurs that were pitching, uh, as well as attending the festival in general. And I hope that this story will help also the builders uh, that are in the Zoom room uh, and, and that my message can carry through the ecosystem. So uh, I titled it, or at least uh, came up with a theme of resiliency, community, and scaling to uh, change big prob big problems. And as a biologist uh, and technologist and entrepreneur uh, at Journey Foods, we're really focused on creating change within the food industry. It's a very important industry to us all, of course. Uh, we focus on $3 trillion packaged foods market, uh, working with uh, large multinational behemoths every day. Uh, and I'm very grateful for the opportunities and the growth and, as well as the stages that I've been able to uh, be a part of since uh, winning last year's pitch competition, which, which has really been amazing to look back on, especially uh, now raising millions of dollars, uh, even during the time of COVID, uh, bringing on great customers and partners. Uh, and, you know, I would say in the year, in the nine months between May of 2019, leading up into the end of February, uh, right, right in, right before lockdown, uh, there were so many lessons to learn uh, from scaling a small team of, I believe, uh, four or five with a couple contract outside contract engineers at the time, and having just been four months out of. Uh, out of our beta stage uh, at last year's festival. And so I, I really wanted to tell the story of, of May 2019, the week of the festival uh, has really, I tell the story a lot to, to people, it stood out in my mind because I was completely drained, completely shocked that I was able to win the pitch competition. And um, I learned so many lessons from that week. So at the time, May, May 2019, late May 2019, we had just launched Journey Foods are uh, in, out into public beta and discussing how we were going to use AI, machine learning, to help companies make food products better. And we had launched this fun uh, little product called uh, Journey Bites, uh, which we worked on. A, we created a patent around called Microfoods. And our idea was to use technology and data 
to change a century old uh, product line uh, that is available across every country around the world and those are fruit snacks. And how are we going to create a cost effective nutrient dense uh, fruit snack with, with data and, and replace the traditional process? And just a couple of months before I pitched at, at, at the Women in Tech Festival, uh, I was able to share some of my ideas on a global stage. And it became very evident that uh, we were going to have to do more than just uh, create a few different product lines, do some white labeling with larger customers, but that our, that our data methodology was really in, of interest to a lot of teams at large food companies, specifically food scientists, uh, IT managers, uh, product managers, and procurement and supply chain managers. And so in March of 2019, we decided to transfer our process into a full SaaS platform. And almost immediately, we were receiving inquiries about uh, an interest in the platform. So a few months later, we were able to launch that. And when I pitched, you know, we were just shifting the products. There was a, there were there was a lot of uncertainty around uh, the 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 ideas that I had at the time. I wanted to challenge the traditional food system in that uh, we've just been over the past 50 years using grocery stores. We've just been really hiring food scientists at scale. And I wanted to create a system that replaced them. And so I was bringing them on as advisors and really trying to work through the day-to-day -day process so that I could create and work with data engineers to uh, become uh, a system of a food product manager, of a food scientist that uh, could work on everything from an Oreo cookie to a plant-based burger. And uh, we had just received an investment uh, from an Asian partner in out of Hong Kong. Uh, and we were asked to spend a, a long month uh, in, in Asia with half of our team in, uh, in, the, in the central states and half of our team having to fly out to, to Hong Kong. Uh, for the month, which was very exciting, a very awesome opportunity. We got to work uh, very close to the Alibaba headquarters. We were surrounded by some of the best AI engineers in the world. And we were also given access to amazing food scientists that had been developing great products for companies that were scaling, such as Impossible Foods and Just Foods. And uh, there were a lot of learnings there. Uh, but but what happened is we were running our products and our sprints and trying to raise money and trying to manage a team within completely different time zones. Uh, it, if you know anything about the, the sort of time zone changes, we were, there was almost a 11 hour, uh, there was more than 11 hour time zone change. And so uh, a lot of our team back in, in Chicago specifically started to become tapped out a little bit drained. Uh, they were losing a, a lot of uh, excitement because we weren't able to really engage and I wasn't able to engage them on uh, some of our smaller customers uh, as well as manage some of our interns that had been onboarding in, in recent months. And it was something that I was really so laser, I was so laser focused on one, finding ways to become a, a thought leader in the space to finding ways to close our pre-seed round, which we had we were able to achieve just a few weeks later. Uh, but then I was asked to fly to Seoul and uh, South Korea uh, for two days and then fly to this festival uh, for two days and then turn around and fly to Hong Kong. So I was in I was in three different countries, three different time zones within a four and a half day period. And I, I, I felt actually when I walked on the stage that I did not have uh, enough of the grasp or, or the sense uh, of how I wanted to pitch to the audience. I was extremely tired. I had a lot of weight on my heart around the engagement of the team and the investors 
in Hong Kong, uh, we're running into some administrative issues. And I'll, I'll just say that we weren't able to receive our investment uh, until uh, several weeks after our stay in Hong Kong. So we were using resources that were, were unplanned for a very, very, one of the most expensive cities in the world. And so uh, what, what I found through all that thrill and, and that gratitude and such an exciting moment to sort of find ways to share the world stage and meet startups from around the world is that uh, it was the beginning really of sort of my, as a, as a founder, as my depletion uh, uh, and, and sort of energy and, 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 and the foundation of what is necessary to, to run a fast growing startup that's you know, looking to bring in uh, high recurring revenue every single month uh, at high rates. We were at the time growing more than 50% month over month. Uh, we were really looking to bring on some huge clients with five, six figure contracts. And we were still so young in, in the development of the product and, and getting a lot of inbound interest. Uh, and what I was doing was just running purely on excitement, purely on fumes of uh, one, just having the opportunity to speak and, and pitch. And, and when I got to the stage at Women in Tech Fest, uh, I was I was just running on the passion of, of the product and what I thought the vision would be. But uh, what I found shortly thereafter, that there was still sort of this weight uh, and this energy and this lack of sleep that was starting to really build up on me, uh, as well as the balance of trying to find and, and manage, you know, uh, 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 you know, our, our budget. And um, that didn't stop there. Uh, I would say that the turning point in May and around Women Tech Festival was that that was when we really closed our pre-seed round, still significant at the time, almost a half a million dollars, uh, still not many women, black women raised that much. I think the average now is 60, 65K for their uh, average venture. And we were picking up on excitement, but I, I kept that excitement going for about nine months there and uh, just never rested. And so I continue to think about that time because we hit so many milestones, but it was also a time for me when I started to pick up and lose the focus around what I think is most important here and that is building founder resiliency. Uh, and, and what I think has, has really helped me and kept me going through that time was the community and, and the supporters that I was able to find that, that week at Women in Tech Fest. Uh, Denise, as well as other founders that I have become friends with that week, uh, that, you know, really just share the basic uh, post that could light your day up, uh, you know, just like a, I'm so proud of Rihanna for posting that or for, for getting the article, Denise, uh, you know, checking in on me through, throughout the year on, on Twitter and finding other founders to share stories around, especially if uh, it's more complex product, uh, such as a, a life sciences software uh, solution. And uh, I believe that without community, a lot of us actually over the past year, especially going into lockdown, could not have found a way to get the energy uh, that's necessary uh, to fight everything from uh, fatigue, from lack of rest, from imposter syndrome, from the, the ever increasing amounts of, uh, you know, what, what, every single entrepreneur will have to go through, no matter how big your team is, is the feeling of, of being at it, of going after your product alone. You know, what has to be most, uh, what we have to be most honest with ourselves about is that at the end of the day, the founders carry a tremendous amount of responsibility. Uh, it is your product, it is your vision, it is your, a lot of your life on the line. 
And so many times you're going to walk into rooms and walk into your day and walk in and look through your calendar and deal with administrative issues and uh, and legal issues and you know, incorporation and investor interests that will only rely on the knowledge and the passion and the grit and the interest that you have from the day that you started the company. And so a lot of that weight and a lot of the energy that goes into managing those things every single week will continue to take a toll on you. And I decided that like the, the, the best way to introduce a lot of, uh, of my story and, and, to, and the background of, um, and, and just, you know, the idea of what is ahead of you, especially for the founders that I presented today, is to come with uh, as, as much honesty as possible. It is a hard road. Uh, in 2020, even though I'm very grateful to have worked on a product and be in food and, and be in packaged food specifically, where this industry has grown more than 30%, almost to a billion dollars in the US alone this year, uh, we are raising money on Zoom. Uh, you know, it's a totally different experience this year than I had last year. Uh, with faces and, and conversations and food and meals and after parties that we went to um, following this event. And what's most what's most disheartening to me is to see that uh, we haven't made a lot of progress in funding women or women of color uh, this year in venture. Uh, and, and some numbers point to the fact that it's uh, has decreased and the trust and, and the opportunities have decreased for women when it comes to funding this year. And so uh, that could potentially, even though we have a new president uh, coming in, and I, I believe uh, he's won, someone just said on Twitter four times uh, this week, uh, our, our, our winning elected president, I think will bring a lot of energy and, and vice president to to entrepreneurship and to uh, venture capital, but it, it can be an extremely hard road. And so the resiliency that you need to build is really going to be around yourself, your, your mental faculties, uh, and really the communication that you have with your, your internal team, your founding team, your startup team, your first employees, but also the other founders and the communities that you build around you. And so I'm extremely grateful to think about how community has helped save me at times when uh, I needed to think about uh, tools, hiring, um, talk about uh, and discuss investors that we shouldn't uh, have conversations with or waste our time around. And uh, that's where I really think that the value of the tribe is most high. I, I call a lot of my founder groups tribes uh, because we talk every day. We have you know, very similar interests and you're gonna learn how important that's gonna be to creating a strong base for you to continue to build the company uh, throughout the upcoming months and years. Because at the end of the day, uh, Companies die because we run out of energy before we run out of money. Uh, there's so much money and uh, potential customers available in the world, especially if you're pivoting and operating right, that uh, we need to continue to think about and create the conversation around the fact that uh, companies really die because of energy and because of uh, energy at the end of a life cycle that is uh, not turned into a new sort of uptick or, or pivot and not necessarily the money that could come in while we have a harder time raising, there's still enough money available for all of us, especially if we put the right pieces in place to create a strong building block so that we can show up as founders every single day. You know, and so what I really wanted to continue to, to think about here is, uh, and, and be honest about it, it's just over the past year, I'm extremely grateful to have reached uh, more than seven figures in, in, in revenue from our customers, launched two versions of our software dashboards, uh, hire the best team ever, uh, find ways to acutely and quickly uh, choose and curate out uh, 
any any toxic code, any toxic employees, any toxic relationships, any toxic investors that could come into the into the 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 surrounding ecosystem of your business. And it's really it was really my challenge, and it was really the, it was really the focus that I put ahead of me to make sure that I could be at my best uh, every single day. And it, it took months and it, t- it took uh, a lot of discipline to find ways to have that vision so that I can make better decisions uh, and iterate on myself every single week. And that turned into lots of growth and great energy for the employees and the customers and the team members and the partners and the and the investors uh, that that really fed off of it. Uh, and so I've found that the biggest ROI in the company has been with the people and the team members and, and the founders and yourself uh, that really are, are the most valuable part of the business. And so uh, as I think about the three things that I wanted to leave here today and, and just very excited to see who the winner, the winner is. And uh, we'll, we're all winners here because, I mean, uh, entrepreneurship is the backbone of this country and hiring and, and will continue to be and needs to be. Uh, and and I, I really hope that we can t- we put on more uh, opportunities and, and events and create uh, and continue to support platforms uh, like the Silicon Valley Forum and, and Women in Tech Festival. But uh, just to close out and, and, and to say thank you here, but to remember that uh, these, these three key areas um, that, has, that have really helped me along uh, to a place of true gratitude, to a place of uh, just energy that has uh, transcended into my team, into the, our decisions, into our growth, into uh, finding and acquiring better uh, investors every single month, uh, to closing millions of dollars in, in, in funding, uh, to, to, to getting support uh, and, and walking on stages and, and joining a uh, list of people that I was really looking up to um, before I entered the stage as, uh, at the Women in Tech Fest and pitched uh, in the 2019 event. But again, really focus on consistently arming yourself with the building blocks of resiliency. And uh, that is rest, that is your health, that, that is uh, finding and getting rid of toxic uh, hires and relationships that can affect your day-to-day work. Um, that is finding co-founders and investors and partners and customers that you absolutely trust. Uh, hunches are a serious thing and, and get rid of them as fast as possible. Uh, value your tribes. I'm, again, extremely grateful for Denise and the team uh, and, and this platform and, and, and finding ways to bring this platform on uh, and continue it here in 2020. Uh, online and 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 have still all the great programming, all the great speakers, uh, and and tribes of other builders and makers that I talk to every single day that have given the extra boost of confidence and the extra boost of camaraderie and friendship and this hard, long but extremely extremely rewarding game of entrepreneurship. Uh, and finally, just. Continue to be bold in your passion uh, and your ideas. Uh, this next decade, the 2020s, we're going to see more entrepreneurs, not just scientists turned technologists like me, but more entrepreneurs solving the biggest, most pressing problems in the world, whether it be food or energy or jobs or poverty or homelessness. Uh, we are up uh, or, 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 you know, anything like women's rights, motherhood, so many problems that exist that uh, have not been solved by the inefficiencies of of our government bodies and public policy uh, and other large technology companies that should have put their dollar and their focus in these areas. Uh, I believe that everyone on the stage today that's pitching is, is, has the, the strength and the vision to solve 
a tremendous amount of problems in the next decade. And I'm so excited to know that uh, us as, as women entrepreneurs are going to change millions and billions of lives. And, and so finally, if you keep those two uh, with you, the, the building blocks of uh, resiliency and, and the tribes, uh, we're going to no doubt Im impact billions. And so finally, thanks so much for the chance to share a little snippet of the story and, and sort of what my life was like since last year. Um, I'm so very grateful to have this opportunity to chime in here. Very excited to see the winner and I hope to connect with so many of you all uh, following this event and, and throughout the weekend. Thank you.